it's me. I have a new setup. I have a new squeaky stool. I'm testing new things out. I'm, there's a very good chance I won't even post this video, but I just want to test all my things out, see how it's working, see how the audio is working. Okay, so uh, Chegg has this, uh, you know, it's Chegg, right? So people post questions. And I thought, hey, I would just try to answer some of the questions. I looked um, at what was there, and there was a lot of statistical physics stuff that I just didn't want to do. Uh, but I'm just going to take this and solve this problem. I haven't really even looked at it except to see that it is not statistical, and this stool is already bothering me. Okay, so let's just look at this problem. So it says a pitcher's mounds are raised to compensate for the vertical drop of balls that travels a distance of 17 meters. Let me write that down. Uh, I'll call that S. 17 meters. Okay. Part A. Oh, it's a little small. If the pitch is thrown with a speed of velocity of 28 meters per second horizontally, so VX0 equals 28 meters per second. I'm going to switch to my paper in just a second. Uh, how far does it drop by the time it reaches the catcher? So delta Y equals. Okay, part B. I'll just write these down. If the speed of the pitch is increased to the drop distance increase, decrease, or stay the same. Well, that's fine. Explain your answer. Uh, online spring 2020. Wow. Okay, so let's jump into this. I'm going to switch over here to my camera view. Sorry. Still getting used to this. Okay. So let's just draw a quick picture, shall we? Pictures are nice. This is cables right there. No, good. Okay, like I said, we're, you're in beta mode here. See, I don't know about this camera. It seems like it's stuttering a little bit. Um, well, let's just keep going. Like I said, I might not post this. If I don't post this video, would you ever even know it? Okay, so here's my picture. And on a raised mound. And going to throw a ball this way and it's going to be a parabola so let's call this actually uh, this is 17 meters uh, so I'll actually call this the let's call this the x y axis right there let's see x v 0 x equals 28 meters per second and so the first thing was how far does it drop so what's this delta y distance right there Okay. So, <clears throat> in projectile motion, there's really uh, one big idea, and that's the motion in the horizontal direction. There's only one force acting on the ball, and it's the downward gravitational force. So that means that the uh, motion in the x direction is constant velocity. The motion in the w vertical direction is constant acceleration. And those two motions are independent except for time. So I can write this. X motion... I can say the only the kinematic equation in the x direction would be x final equals x0 plus vx0 delta t. That's really the only one that you care about. And then in the y motion, it looks like this. I have a constant acceleration. So I'd say the final y is going to be the initial y plus vy0 delta t minus one half g delta t squared. So I'm assuming the acceleration in the y direction is negative g, where g is 9.8. So in this case, I want to find y minus y zero, right? If it doesn't really matter what this is, I want to find the change in y. So y minus y zero equals delta y, and that's going to be v y zero delta t minus one half g delta t squared. And the initial y velocity, since it's thrown horizontally, is zero. So it's zero. So now I know g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm not too fond. I, I think I need to like move. Wait, what if I just move this right here? Is that better? I feel like that's better. Okay. Uh, so I know that, but I don't know t. So in, in order to get the delta t, I can go over here, right? So let's say he starts at x equals 0. His x final is going to be 17. So I say 17 meters equals x0, which is 0, 
plus vx0, which is the initial x velocity times delta t. Well, I know that, that's 28, I know that I can solve for this. So delta t, it's gonna be 17 meters divided by 28 meters per second. That's delta t, that's not t, right? And that's just gonna be a number. We'll get to the number in a second. So what I know, I know delta t, and it even has the right units, mass divided by, I mean meters divided by meters per second. I'm kind of off on my game because I'm thinking about the camera, just letting you know. Seems like a little crooked too, but I don't want to touch it. Okay, so now I know delta t. I can go over here and solve for delta y. Delta y is going to be equal to uh, minus one half g delta t squared. Okay, so let's just jump over here. I'll, I'll do this with, um, yeah, let's do this in Python. Okay, so I'm going to jump over here to Python, uh, my favorite calculator ever. Let's just see how this works. Computer, go back over here, go to this. I was working on something else. New Trinket Glow Script, Python. Okay, so let's just start typing in some stuff. G equals 9.8. Uh, I know VX0 equals 28. Delta X, I'll call it DX, is 17. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delta T equals uh, delta X DX divided by vx0. And you see, you notice the nice thing it's great about here, I didn't even use the numbers. I didn't write, I didn't say 17 divided by 28, although I could have done that. Um, I just did it as variables. I can print that if I want to. Print uh, dx equals comma, no dt. dt in seconds. Let's just run that. So 0.67, it doesn't really matter though. Okay, so now I want to say uh, dy equals, I could even do this, let's do this, vy0 equals zero, dy equals vy0 times dt minus 0.5 times g times dt squared. And you notice, it does, I don't have to put that number in. And I can print dy equals uh, dy meters run it so 1.8 meters that's really far I guess that's the answer though let's see what the seventeen meters twenty eight meters times right I guess that's right. Okay, <clears throat> let's just look at these other questions here. Part A was that. Part B, it, if the speed is increased, what will happen to the drop distance? Well, we, we can just go over here. You, there's a couple ways you could do this. Uh, I could just literally change the speed. Let's just change this to 48. And what's gonna happen to the drop speed, the drop distance? it's less, right? It's half 0.6 meters. And so that makes sense because it's gonna travel that distance in a shorter amount of time. Uh, so that's less time that it can fall. Uh, the next one, B, I explained C. D, if this baseball game were played on the moon, would the drop distance increase, decrease, stay the same? So on the moon, the difference is G is smaller. It's one sixth, right? So if you have a smaller G, you're gonna have a smaller drop distance. And again, you could just go back in the code up here. That's the nice thing about this. I can just say, okay, divided by six, and let's change this back to 28 run. So it only dropped 0.3 meters. And let's see, anything else? Correct, decrease E. Okay, good, that's it. Okay, so again, like I said, I may or may not post this, but trying out a new setup, trying out some check problems just for fun, that's the end.